Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, I'm going to be talking about the version update that is coming to the game on 1.25.2021, which is not mandatory, but it becomes mandatory at 1.26.2021 at 19. So basically a full day later. Um, there's, some, there's some real good stuff coming in in this version, so it felt it needed to be talked about, so... That's what I'm going to do. Um, so today's video is going to be focused on that. I hope you like it. If you end up liking it, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And now let's get into the actual video. So to start, I'm going to start with the most important things first. Go a little bit out of order. Um, so I'm going to start with the most important thing. They are going to give everyone a tenfold summon voucher because it's an update. They do it, I think, every update, but it's still nice to have. Now let's go down to the important stuff. This is all good. This is all good stuff, but a lot of people are probably going to be here because they are improving the tutorial summon. The tutorial summon... So here's a fun backstory about my specific uh, channel. I used to have a, uh, a, a, re, a re... not like a reroll guide. I made it and I put a lot of time, effort, and a lot of... Uh, I thought which was a lot of effort into it. Not a lot of people liked it because literally after I finished doing it, the next week all the info became null and void. And now that video at this point I feel I should just take it down. I've already like literally left on it, hey, like <laughs> this is out of date. It's only like three months old at the time I think when I put it up there it was actually like six months. The year had not ended and by the end of the year all the reroll things that I had told about like hey maybe go for this character or this is the reroll method all became null and void. So before it looks like Persona 5 is going to show up, they decided to once again improve the tutorial summon. I think they did the same thing for Fire Emblem Heroes. So it seems that now whenever there's a collab, they are going to make big significant changes to the game. So kind of good, good to know. Obviously, maybe not all the time, but it at least seems like that's what their MO is currently going to be. Um, so let's actually read what the changes are. So after a new player finishes the prologue, they will be able to perform 50 summons, 5 tenfold summons, for free while the game downloads any remaining required data. Once the player has performed all 50 summons, they will be given the choice of accepting the results or starting the process over again for the first tenfold summon. Players may retry this process as many times as they like until they are satisfied with their 50 summons. Players will only receive the 50 adventurers and dragons that are included in the results that are accepted, even if the summon a total of more than 50. Okay. Players will only receive the 50 adventures and dragons that are included in the results that they accepted, even if they summoned a total of more than 50. Okay, sure. How would they be able to do that? Doesn't matter. Players who began playing the game after the release of version 2.4.0, or players who are updating the version to 2.4.0, have yet to complete the free post prologue tutorial tenfold summon that guarantees one four or higher adventurer or dragon, and the summon that grants the choice of one five star adventurer from a certain selection of them are eligible are eligible to perform the summon. That means if you did any of that, you are not getting this tutorial summon. <laughs> so me, for example, not getting this tutorial summon <laughs> because I did it a long ass time ago. <laughs> Um, at least one four-star uh, or higher adventure or dragon is guaranteed to appear every ten summons, but the five appearance rate will not increase as a substantial as a, subs a subsequent tenfold summon if a player fails to summon a five from the current tenfold summon. Players will not obtain Elder Water Eldwater for duplicate adventures, and the summon animation for this tutorial summon differ from those. Of Wait, what? Really? And the summon animations for this tutorial summon differ from those of previous summon showcases. Information regarding appearance rate may be found at the summon detail screen. Okay, cool. With the implementation of the improved tutorial summon, the existing free post prologue tutorial tenfold summon that that grants the choice of one five-star adventurer for a certain selection of them will be removed. And this is what it looks like. We don't know we don't know the roster. I don't know what fives are in it. Um, it's gonna be hell. Um, but it sure seems like these galley units are on it. There's a specific law that says you can't put a unit on a banner that is not inside the banner. Uh, for example, 
Dokkan de dealt with something like that pretty recently. <sighs> Dokkan, it seems to be always, always is the unit that deals with it. But the point is, is that by law, if they're showing... Like, they can't basically trick you into summoning. For example, they can't show these four, these galley units and then give you... Uh, and then not include them in the summon. At least, as far as I'm aware, that's how it's always been. So, let's hope it's going to stay that way. Now, it is interesting to see that we have Gala Ellie, we have Gala Renza, we have Gala Luca, Gala Cleo, and the Gala Prince. But there is no Gala Cerise and there is no Gala Mim. So, it makes it seem like to me... And it's, it's not even an age thing, because um, Gala Luca is the oldest one here... And Gala Cerise was the first Gala unit ever released, and Gala Mim was the third. Ranzel was the second. So it seems like to me, it seems likely that the fives that are going to be in it, at least from the start, are going to be these Gala units. Um, I wouldn't expect any other Gala units if there are more. If, if this banner literally had every single Gala in it, it would be perhaps the greatest summoning tutorial in the history of gotchas it's too good my version of it would be too good the one that has every single gala banner unit on it and has every um every five adventurer on it and you could re-roll infinitely it would be impossible it would be like you would it would seem like you'd be able to set up super easily um so i don't think it's that so you're gonna have to wait and see when it comes out who is on the um, banner it seems like I might have to dig up a spare thing and actually look into it because I'm very curious to see what is in there. Because, that, like I said, the reroll process has completely changed. Obviously, you want at least one of these. <laughs> in theory, you would want every single one of the galley units that are on it. But based off of the limitations that you are being given here, I'm going to say that's straight up impossible. There's no way in hell you'll be able to get every single galley unit. Because even on a Gala banner, where the rates are two times, and I'm going to assume that these guys aren't featured, that no one's featured, um, it's going to be damn near impossible to actually get Gala units on this, which is why they give you infinite rerolls. The thing that sucks is that they give you 50, but it's not like, oh, would you like to reroll that one specifically? No, they send you all the back to number one. So there's a lot of like pros and cons here that have been balanced out. I do think that this is a fantastic way to start out though. For sure there has been an issue of starting Jagalia of it's like, well did you start with a Gala banner and did you pull one of the good Gala banner units? Then that's always been my problem with recommending Jagalia. It's like, oh I should start it. I'm like, yeah, find a good Gala banner and for those three days, that's when you got your chance to start up. But I dig this. With this, it should be easier for new players to jump into Dragalia. This is a good change. I like seeing it. It does make that video just so outdated at this point. So crazy outdated. It's hilarious. But it's fine. It also keeps getting dislikes because of how crazy outdated it is. Which is why I had to change the damn title of it because people were like, Hey, this was the release this year and it's so useless. It's my the game improves itself so quickly. So let me just go over the other changes real quick. So the user interface will be adjusted in various places. Issues that are going to be addressed when the adventurer Halloween Akasha is used in Dragon Battle or for bleeding equals HP recovery 1 to 2 ability do not restore her HP when activated. When playing the auto battle feature enabled, the adventurer Gyrius will sometimes become unable to move when attacked under certain conditions. Yeah, you should fix that. Now let's go up here. Some updates, they're improving the skill uh, detail screen, so now we should get some numbers about what some stuff does. Um, I don't know if it's going to include mods. It kind of looks like from here it might include some mod stuff, which is the um, the biggest thing that's been a hassle with some skills, and specifically when you're like looking up uh, upcoming units, is that they'll include a skill and it's like, deals water damage, and it's like... Well, this move is either amazing or it's completely stupid. Like we don't know. We don't know any any of the any of the hassles of it at all. All we know is that it deals damage. And it's really hard to be like, well, this move deals damage when in a game where it's so much based off of the numbers behind the scenes, it seemed increasingly silly that they didn't give us a hint of it at all. Like seriously, those numbers are what make or break specific units. So it's good. It seems like we're going to be getting a little bit more of that. I don't know if they're going to start including that in the um, uh, in the news, but at the very least, we'll have it in game whenever we can get them. 
and then they're adding an addition of favorite systems for worm prints to help players better organize and manage their collection of worm prints. A particular worm print can be added or removed from a list of favorites by tapping the star icon. They're adding favorites for worm prints, which is very good. More improvements to the worm prints is better. Uh, as someone who is going to be joining up Dragalia, you'll be thankful that all these worm print stuff is being improved on because it was a real hassle for a very long time. So yeah, this is this update. Again, it's coming on this day, 125 2021 If I see so many comments telling me when is this update going live, I'll know for a fact you did not watch the video because at the beginning of the video, I literally say 125 2021 is when the download becomes available. And the very next day, it has to be going. It's an automatic update for everyone. Um, it'll be a good time to start up Dragalia, I would say for sure. I might do a video again. I know, I chances are I will do a video where I'll show the um, the process from a new account because I actually am kind of interested to see the new summon animations if they're different or something. Um, very interested in that. So, yeah, that's it for today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment, tell me about how you feel about these specific changes to the updates. Um, if you're new to Jigalia, are you thinking of starting up now for pre preparations for Persona 5? Because let me tell you right now, everything filler until Persona 5. That's the serious feeling I have, and I'm glad that we're getting nothing but filler, because the last thing I need in my life is actual banners to summon on, uh, with the exception of the Yukata, which were clearly not. Um, the Gavel Remix banner, which is gone now. Which was bait, but it was very good bait. Or bad bait, depending on if you had the units I didn't care about at least. But yeah, that's it. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.